we go. Kellen Pastor on your left. Mono Green Aggro. Chris Mueller on your right. Mono Red Aggro. Let's take a look at the other matchups too real quick. Andrew Davis, Blue White Control and Modern against Justin Miller playing Jund in Modern. And then we got Porter Darby with Death and Taxes against Daniel Barkin playing Lens. As we are going to be underway here. It's a mountain. A it's one a Soul Mage, believe Lucky. it or not. <laughs> yeah, the luckiest. That and is a fresh to death 7th edition Lanor Elves. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. You heard me. What? Mountain lightning strike. See ya. In for two. That is one good way that uh, Mono Red is able to slow down this Mono Green deck, killing off their mana creatures early. Uh, they don't have a ton of two drops, just Branch Walker and Heart of Kieran, I believe. And Heart of Kieran doesn't block if you, you know, take care of the early threats. Yeah, two drops is something this deck is lacking. It also does have a copy. It also does have four copies of Scrap Piece Scrounger. But, again, that's, you know, that's a two drop that can't really block. And, you are going to see Earthshaker Kenra come down and attack here for three. Mono Red off to a decent enough start as we'll head back over to Kellen Pastor. This is one of the reasons why uh, last week uh, my teammate Phil Smith and I came up with a version of Mono Red that focused more on a braid as the two-mana removal spell. Uh, just cards like Heart of Kieran are really awkward to play against. Not only uh, are they good against things like Earthshaker Kenra or Oncrop Crasher because they can be crewed uh, after the abilities but at the same time uh you know a braid is necessary because it can actually kill the heart of kieran where a lightning strike doesn't really do a whole lot so heart of kieran very good against red very good at playing defense and offense since it has vigilance ronis the indomitable has arrived oh well, there it is the second abraid yeah there is a timely abraid which is going to pump up soul scar mage and allow an attack here for four ronis is a three mana five five death touch indestructible which wanted to crew the heart of kieran but it died Ronus and Indomitable can't attack or block unless you control another creature with power four or greater, which I think Kellen now does, given the Steel Leaf Champion. Another target creature, of course, gets plus two, plus one, gain trample in a turn for two colors and a green. We're seeing some new ones here, so now we'll take a look at Steel Leaf Champion. Is big. He big. Is big. He also hard to block. True. <laughs> he do good blocking, though. GGG, 5-4, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Elf. Knight. Yeah, he's also riding a Kavu. Yeah. And that's tight. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I kind of wondered what happened to the Kavu when they were doing uh, the previews for um, Dominaria. But uh, then, you know, they came out with a few later, so it's okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I like to see Kavu come back. They used to be my jam. Yeah. K -k 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 Kavu Chameleon. Or the Titan, of course. Mm -hmm. People love the Titan. So this is the stage in the game where the mono red deck is going to start having some trouble. Uh, the mono green deck is just hitting all its land drops, playing bigger and better things. Going to stabilize the eight life after fighting through two lightning strikes and two abrades. Or, uh, sorry, an abrade and two lightning strikes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just a one-two creature in play. Even if uh, Chris Muller is able to play something like Hazard at the Fervent next turn, the indestructible uh, Ronus. Ronus from the other side is going to be able to contain it for now. Well, it looks like it's uh, starting to pick up in popularity a little bit here. Not a card you can play a ton of copies of, as an example, Kellen Pastor. Only playing one here in his main deck, but this one looks to be pretty good on the battlefield. Yeah, slightly harder to turn on than something like Hazard at the Fervent, which the only requirement is to play a bunch of cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harvester came in, gave Kellen to energy and the ability to maybe gain a little bit of life here soon enough. You saw Merfolk Branchwalker reveal a force, put that on the battlefield, and then the Ronus couple of lands out there include two copies of Hesep Oasis, the very powerful desert. You also see a green-black land out there. It's a Blooming Marsh for the rebuys on Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yeah, Scrap Heap Scrounger, a, a particularly interesting card out of a normally mono-green deck. Uh, with the prevalence of you know control decks, you really want an aggressive threat on turn two. Um, it has three power for two, which is really good for shrinking the, the cost of Galta. Uh, but at the same time, uh, just having a threat that you can continually uh, bring back through removal spells, through combat damage, is really important for a deck as linear as uh, the Mono Green Aggro deck. Lightning Strike looks like it's going to go upstairs. Boom. Soul Scar Mage will, of course, become a 2-3 because of Prowess. That'll beat Branch Walker in a fight. We're going to head back over to Kellen who right now his goal is simply not to die. He'll pay two. This is a Scrap Heap Scrounger. That will crew. Of course, that card can't block. We're also going to 
target that with the Oasis. And I think he's going to gain a whole bunch of life now, so he's going to spend an energy. Yep. And he's also going to turn on Ronas to be able to attack this turn. Pumping it up to six power, he's going to swing in for 11. That puts Mueller all the way down to four life, and it bumps Kellen up to 11 from the lifelink. Going to be a hard game for Kellen to lose now as we head back over to Chris. Chris will draw a card, having some difficulty finding the fourth land, sure, but it's these kind of large threats that are going to be difficult for his deck to beat, Todd. Yeah, uh, some people have suggested playing uh, Fight with Fire out of the sideboard to help against things like Lear Dawnbringer, but it would also be good in this matchup as a one-card answer to uh, something as annoying as Stilly Paladin on two, turn two or three. That's actually a good point. I think the Fight with Fire will see a little bit more play as we go. Um, <laughs> Notably, it's also insanely good if you get hit with a Settle the Wreckage. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Hey, that's a real thing. No, it is. That's a real thing. I mean, we saw the the yesterday the mono red uh, Godfro's Gift Goblin deck mm -hmm. get up to ten eleven mana or whatever against the blue eye control. They settle the wreckages. Yep. So, you know, it's not that hard. Oh, chain whirler, got to trigger deal a little bit of damage everywhere. Yeah, and kind of cool interaction here with Soulscar Mage. Soulscar says uh, whenever non-combat damage happens to an, uh, an opposing creature, you know, uh, that's dealt in minus one, minus one counters, Chain Whirler does one to the face, but also one to all the opposing creatures. And since it's not combat damage, they all get shrunk a little bit. Kellen says, I'm going to turn on the Aethersphere Harvester, throw a desert at it, and kill you. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So Kellen Pastor is going to win game one here over Chris Mueller. Boom. Mono Green Aggro. Very quickly up a game over Mono Red Aggro. These players not wasting any time. We'll check our scoreboard when we come back. But first, a couple of messages. You ready for game number two between Kellen Pastor and Chris Mueller? It is Mono Green Aggro versus Mono Red Aggro. Tough matchup here for Chris, but it's a card that you mentioned here in Chris's sideboard, Todd, that I imagine you have some interest in. And three Fight with Fire. There are others in three Harsh Mentor, two Chandra Torture Defiance, two Abrade, two Magma Spray, two Ethers for Harvester, and a Glorybringer. But you want those Fight with Fires, my man? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, just three mana kill a large creature is definitely something you want in this particular matchup and again it has some value in settle the wreckage matchups because once you are able to kick it the 10 damage goes anywhere so if you get hit with a settle the wreckage you have this backup card that not only could kill your dawnbringer but also just finish off your opponent uh, the rest of the sideboard, I really like Chandra Torch of Defiance in this matchup. Just being able to, to pick off some of uh, the, the middling creatures and uh, provide some value later on is nice. Uh, I don't think you want uh, more shock effects like Magma Spray. A Braid is fine because, uh, of course, you did see Heart of Kirin and uh, Aether's for Harvester in game one. And then Glorybringer, another sweet spot deal four. Other side of things here for Kellen. He's got two Life Crafters Bestiary, two Sky Sovereign Council Flagship, two Nissa Vital Force, two Prey Upon, two Thrashing, a Brontodon, or old Brony. We got two Plummets, a Heroic Intervention, a Crushing Canopy, and a Death Gorge Scavenger. What do you like over there? Uh, I really like Sky Sovereign Council Flagship, and I, well, I really like it in the main deck, and I'm surprised not to see it. Uh, it was one of the standout cards when I played with this deck for me. Uh, it's a 5-drop that is arguably better than something like Virgis Gearhulk, which is noticeably absent, I believe. He's got a couple in the main, actually. Oh, okay. So yeah. he has two. Yep. Okay. So that, that switch is, is definitely the uh, the strain point on, on the 5-drop. Like, which one do you play? Uh, aside from, from Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, I like Death Gorge Scavenger. Uh, maybe a couple copies of Prey Pawn so you can pick off an early Bomat Courier or something like that. Uh, I, w I don't think I would bother with much of anything else. Well, those are the options there for both players. They'll be underway here in game number two in just a moment. And the two players that are getting ready for game number two as well are Justin Miller and Andrew Davis as the Jund player. It's one game number one against the Blue White Control. So we're getting ready here for game number two between Mono Green Aggro and Mono Red Aggro. We'll see if we can figure out what's going on with lands and death and taxes soon enough. But that is sometimes a difficult matchup for lands as going to the 2020. Not a great plan. No, but Punishing Fire is very good. Uh, the problem for the lands deck is that the Death and Taxes deck has so many ways to interact with them, whereas normally the Fair decks and, and Legacy don't really uh, have that many, just Wasteland for the most part. But uh, the Death and Taxes deck not only has like Flicker Wisp off an Aether Vial to blink your token, mm -hmm. uh, they can also use Rish and Port to slow you down in the early turns, uh, as well as even Thalia to make Punishing Fire like significantly worse and slower. Uh, so there's a lot of interaction from the Death and Taxes side. I think Death and Taxes is favored, but it is certainly a close match. Death and Taxes starting to pick up a little bit in popularity. If you think about what won last week in Atlanta. Legacy player Jonathan Joe playing White Red Taxes. Oh, yeah. Bit of a red splash there for Dire Fleet Daredevil and a few other cards. Magus of the Moon, particularly good. Yeah. 
So maybe the white splash, excuse me, the red splash in Death and Taxes might be the way to go moving forward for you Death and Taxes fans. But for our standard matchup, eh, no real splashing going on here. Mono green aggro, yeah, there is. mono red scrappy aggro. And just a just a small just a, touch. Just, just a scrappy. Just just a little small splash for <laughs> Kellen. I'm sure it comes up a non-zero amount, but for Chris, he's keeping it real. Taking a look at that mana base, 22 mountains, one scavenging grounds. The man knows what he's trying to do. No. <laughs> nah, he ain't messing around. The one scavenger grounds, you know, he's 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 dipping his toe in. <laughs> For the most part, yeah, that's his splash. We're playing some mountains. Yeah. And notably, uh, very few deserts in these uh, new mono red aggro decks. Uh, in order to cast uh, Goblin Chain Whirler on turn three uh, more reliably, you know, in the past uh, we have seen you know Grasping Dunes in a, a recent Grand Prix winning deck list, as well as uh, multiple copies of Scavenger Grounds. Uh, and the usual uh, deal one desert. Yeah, the old Sun Scorched Desert. You would see yeah. that sometimes. And, you know, way back in the day, which wasn't actually that far oh, we long don't, ago. We don't talk about that one. We don't talk about Rainy Nap Ruins? No, because okay. everyone wants it and no one can have it. No, no one should have it. Rainy Nap Ruins. A little Rip too good. Uh, Daniel Barkan got a win game number one here reported RV. Lance up a game over Death and Taxes. So the team of Barkin, Davis, and Pastor currently leading things as we go. Looks like Kellen may be taking a mulligan here. Mm -hmm. And with Chris uh, Muller on the play, uh, this mulligan, every mulligan is important because, you know, sometimes the modern red player will have to use two burn spells to kill one of the larger creatures. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're already behind on cards, like having your opponent be a little behind is also important. Kellen going to scry now after keeping the six. That top card is going to become the bottom one now. Chris will start things off. Let's see if he's got a one drop. He had Soul Scar Mage last game. He has Bobo, looks like this game. Oh, he's going to no, start no, with no, Soul Scar no, no, Mage, no. though. No, he didn't read my article. <laughs> Always Bomat Courier. Always. <laughs> It'll be a Blooming Marsh. That's not, it's not 100% true, but every single card under Bomat Courier is important. Um, he did side in Magma Spray, so he does have a cheap way to answer this uh, Lenor Elves. Yeah, Kellen's ready to see his Lenor Elves die. Now here's Bobo, and now here's an attack for three, given the prowess on the Soul Scar Mage. So if Muller had switched uh, the order in which he played his creatures, he would have dealt one less damage. Let's be honest with that. But is that one uh, damage worth an extra card under Bomat Courier? And that's the, you know, the real challenge in the early turns of sequencing your creatures. Let's take a look at Greenbelt Rampager. That card's in the battlefield now here for Kellen. It's an interesting one. Maybe it's just face up. Yeah, okay, it's just face up, something that could be coming. Excuse me. But we, still, we do still want to take a look at the elephant as there's a harsh mentor. Yeah, it's, it's uh, namely in the deck uh, as a way to continually crew all your vehicles for very cheap. Um, I really like it when you're playing, like, through, you know, five to seven vehicles. Uh, Kellen's main deck only has four. Uh but for the most part, it can just be a three mana three four, which is not too bad. It's you know thrashing Bronadon without the ability to kill artifacts or enchantments. Uh, but it can also continually uh, activate an Ether Sphere Harvester if you manage your energy correctly. Thrashing Bronadon, the reveal there from Merfolk Branch Walker. You saw a harsh mentor come down there for Chris. However, things are getting more difficult for Chris because, hey, most of the time, Todd, green creatures are just bigger than red ones, and that's what we're seeing here yet again. Oh, for sure. Uh, I mean, Soul Scar Mage gums up the works a little bit uh, because, you know, a single shock can can shrink the Green Belt Rampager into a 1-2, for example. Um, I'm not really sure what the, the best attack here is. Uh, you don't really want to lose your Harsh Mentor because it'll punish... Uh, the Mono Green deck for crewing a vehicle, for example. But it also th it deals them too if they activate Hash Up Oasis uh, or any other activated ability. Well, there is the Oasis. And it looks like old Branchy's going to be coming in here. So Kellen Pastor must be feeling pretty good about this game if he's attacking right now. This looks like it's going to be a Magma Spray to take care of the Merfolk Branch Walker. So that creature will be exiled for good. Actually, it'll be interesting. Yes, I think it's still, even though there's a Soul Scar Mage on the battlefield. I don't even know. I think that's <laughs> the case. That's actually what Kellen was uh, asking about. Looks I like our table spotter <laughs> helping out there, too. So one one of the cards like Magma Spray, it might actually be Magma Spray, uh, specifically says if the damage is dealt uh, 
or sorry, one of them says if the creature dealt damage this way, goes to the graveyard, it gets exiled. And another one says if it would die this turn, it gets exiled. I think Incendiary Flow was the card that did not work right with uh, Soulscar Mage. With Soulscar Mage. Well, Magnus Ray Fortune says if that creature dies this turn. Yes. So exiled, easy does it. You go. Uh, Brontodon is here with a mana available to blow up Bomat Courier or some other artifact or enchantment that may come from Chris Mueller. We'll also take a look at old Bronte, too. Now, is this mono green deck? We haven't seen it all weekend. I know we saw it a little bit last weekend in Atlanta. A couple copies doing well on the SCG Tour. Three mana, three, four. Dinosaur. Sacrifice Thrashing Bronson Destroy Target Artifact or Enchant. We've seen cards like this before. Most notably, Kosali Pride Mage. This is a bigger and beefier version. I mean, that's what dinosaurs are, right? Just bigger, better versions of other animals. That's the idea. Yeah. Just ask the Toronto Raptors. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that, uh, that hurts. I don't even care about the Toronto Raptors, personally. but um, <laughs> Neither do we. <laughs> you are cold. <laughs> You're a cold man. Wow. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have fun. Let's go back over to Chris. Braid takes down the Aether Sphere Harvester. Uh, even though the Harsh Mentor is kind of keeping it in check from getting too much life, uh, the five toughness is uh, pretty tough to deal with. There's Goblin Chain Whirler. Going to knock down these large green creatures to more manageable size. They're both two threes now instead of three fours. Though still tough to get through, as all Chris can do is pass the turn back over to Kellen. I mean, if, if uh, Kellen doesn't have a follow-up here that can block Goblin Chain Whirler, the 3-3 First Dragon creature can easily attack next turn without fear. It's true. A little First Strike damage. Yep. And again, the, the interaction between Soul Scar Mage, Goblin Chain Whirler, a very powerful interaction. And one of the reasons why you're seeing way more Soul Scar Mages in these mono red decks than Fanatical Firebrand, which was picking up a lot of steam right before Dominaria was released. Yeah, Fanatical Firebrand definitely was the more popular of the two. Now, less so, unless you're playing like the Mono Red Gift deck, but those, that's oh, a sure. different deck entirely yes, yes. than this take on Mono Red Aggro. This is more your classic Mono Red aggressive deck. Looks like we're doing a quick check on some Oracle text right now, see how some card interactions will be working. But for those of you just joining us, here's the battlefield. Kellen Pastor at 14. He's got a 2-3 Greenbelt Rampager, a 2-3 Thrashing Bronson, two energy from the Aethers for Harvester that's in the graveyard. And a couple of lands out there, some of which do tap for black mana to return Scrap Heap Scrounger. Though I'd be surprised if that card's in his deck after sideboard. And it looks like he's going to be using his Hassap Oasis, ah. which he'll have take two from, to turn old Brontodon into a bigger creature. It has five power and six toughness crashing in. This is a fairly aggressive attack by Kellen. But I do like it. The 2-3 uh, Greenbelt Rampager is still kind of holding back the rest of the team that's not Goblin Chain Whirler. And if he has a follow-up here, Prey Upon, that's a nice one. Well, that's not bad at all. Ah, it does get shrunk by the Soul Scar Mage, though. That's <laughs> but he sacrifices it before it dies. It still has uh, a little bit of toughness left over mm -hmm. from the Hash Up Oasis. Nice play by Kellen Pastor. Hey, he asked for the Oracle text. Now he knows. No one's half the battle. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> They're not all winners. <laughs> but some of them are pretty good sometimes. Another. Oh, I'm Crab Crasher. This is a nice one here. This is going to allow uh, Mueller to attack in for six damage and exerting the Oncrap to. Uh, make it so the Greenbelt Rampager can't block. No fob, Soulscar Mage. Chris is out of cards. We head back over to Kellen. Kellen needs a little help now. He's certainly in burn range. This, okay. That's a big All right. That's a big creature. All right. There's Virtuous Gear Hulk. I really hope he just draws Galta and plays it next turn. It's like, <laughs> it's like all right, I have a 2-3. Well, now um, I have 400 power. Siri wants to distribute all these counters on the Gear Hulk. Looks like a couple over to Green Belt. And now Green Belt's going to be attacking. I do like the attack here from Kellen because the plan here is, you know, I'm trying to win the game. Sitting back isn't going to do anything. 
Yeah, I mean, the Oncrack Crasher can't attack next turn. There's only three attackers. Uh, and since uh, Muller doesn't have any cards in hand, he needs a peeled uh, big spell here to, to actually threaten lethal. Oncrack Crasher number two would be lethal. Uh, that's about it. Uh, five with Fire doesn't quite take care of the Virgin's Gear Hulk at, at a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, something like Lightning Strike, I guess, would be lethal as well, since it would pump the Soul Scar Mages. It's got a few. A Braid would also do it, since uh, Virgin's Gear Hulk is, in fact, an artifact. Take a look at the Oasis there. Well, we'll see what comes next here for Chris. My guess is he did not draw away to lethal this turn. That is my <laughs> guess as well. That's a good read, Todd. Yeah. It's a good read. As a modern red player, you need to know which card you can draw at any point to just kill your opponent. And uh, Chris seems like he knows what he's doing. What is this? Heart of Karen right off the top. Pass the turn back. Two blockers available here for Kellen still. Uh, he does need to be a little careful. Activating the Heart of Kieran uh, does deal him two damage with the Harsh Mentor. Very true. Let's take a look at old Harsh Mentor if we can. I know a lot of players were very excited upon this card being previewed. Still definitely a good card. More of a role player is the two-mana human cleric. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh Mentor deals two damage to that player. It makes me really mad that uh, Harsh Mentor doesn't affect Planeswalkers. It would have been a fine card for the Mono Red deck to beat the Sahili Rai combo when it was legal for, you know, the, the few months. Yep. That's a mountain. I think specifically it might have been too good against Planeswalkers because even a tick up would be a minus one. Yeah, it'd be a lot to, to yeah. handle. Didn't get a great look at what Kellen drew. I think it may have been another copy of Heart of Karen. And if that's the case, that's not great. Legend, wait for it. <laughs> you just tell me when you're ready. Derry. Yep, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I mean, neither player progressed their board uh, on either of these turns. I think Kellen is supposed to just keep sitting back, hope that Chris draws one more brick, and then Kellen draws something big. He can't really afford to attack. Uh, puts him basically dead on board thanks to the Harsh Mentor and the Heart of Kieran. There's another brick. Doesn't look like a great great draw for Chris. I can let you know up top in our legacy match, Daniel, Daniel Barkin and Porter Darby getting ready for game number three. Lance, Death, and Tax is all tied up. There's a mountain there for Chris. He'll pass the turn back over to Cal. A little draw go here between Mono Green and Mono Red Aggro. You don't really expect this. But that's where we are. Please tell me that was another Heart of Kieran. <laughs> heart of Hearts. Oh, boy. Well, it was not. <laughs> 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 he wouldn't be attacking here with a Scarehawk <laughs> if it was a Heart of Kieran. I'll tell you that much. Looks like the Gearhawk wants to get in for six. And I am with Todd. It was not another Heart of Kieran. I am led to believe. All right. Chris is going to fall down to five. That is a green belt rampager. And that is going to enter the battlefield. It's Big gonna, old elephant. Going to eat up that last two energy. Mm -hmm. Stay in play. It's not a May ability. You can't just keep playing it to gain an energy. Not that you'd really want to at this point. I think that may have been another mountain. Lands. Yeah. Well. If Kellen wants to get aggressive here next turn, he can just activate Heart of Kieran, pump it with Hash Up Oasis. I'll deal him four damage, put him uh, within lethal of shock range. But I think shock is actually lethal right now uh, with the Oncrop Crasher forcing him to uh, activate Heart of Kieran to have two blockers. A shock would be enough with the two pumps from Soul Scar Mage to finish the job. So it seems like just going for it is ideal then. Yeah. So going for it seems like the play. You could just straight up lose to it a braid. <laughs> but, that's true. But, that's true. you know, the, he would have had to have drawn the exactly a braid this turn. Otherwise, he would have used a braid on the Virgil's Gear Hulk long ago yep. and, and started attacking. A braid's got plenty of targets out there. Heart of Kieran, deal three damage to something. Soul Scar made shrinking it. And, of course, as you mentioned, killing Virgil's Gear Hulk outright. So now it's, it's up to Kellen. 
to kind of just go down the checklist once he gets his turn of like, what can I do to try to win the game this turn? What am I trying to play around? So on and so forth. Uh, and if he does go down the checklist of shock and a braid, I think he'll realize, and lightning strike obviously would kill him too, Right. that he doesn't really need to play around anything. No. No, he, he was dead to virtually any uh, non-creature spell. Uh, for a while, he was dead to a few different creatures. Um, but his opponent just hasn't done anything for like four turns straight. I think you just have to assume he doesn't have it and you got to go for it. Uh-oh. Oh, he's forcing the action here. So if uh, if Kellen just uh, activates Heart of Kieran, blocks two creatures, you know, all he has to do next turn is just attack. I'm pretty sure this is not lethal. He's going to go to four from the Harsh Mentor. Block the two big ones, take two down to two. Oh, there's Mount, and that is going to do it. Kellen Pastor is going to win this match over Chris Mueller. Two games to zero. Mono Green Aggro going to take care of Mono Red Aggro, much like Todd Anderson did predict. Seemed like a very difficult matchup for Chris, and it was. So, we are going to get ready here for game three of Modern between Andrew Davis and Justin Miller. That's Blue White Control versus Jund. Jund, guy. Yeah. But first, a few messages from our sponsors. We are back to watch game number three between Andrew Davis and Justin Miller. It's Blue White Control. It's Jund. Both these players are tied up. You saw Kellen Pastor earlier get the job done with Mono Green Aggro against Chris Mueller playing Mono Red Aggro. And lands and death and taxes are certainly in a third and final one. But we want to turn our attention to Modern where Justin, unfortunately for him, is taking a mulligan down to six. Mulligan to six, not that bad in Modern. You have a lot of really powerful cards that can dig you out of holes. Uh, mulligan to five, however, things start to get a little dicey. Maybe you miss a land drop or two. You don't really get to play the same kind of magic that your opponent is playing. All right, it looks like Justin is happy enough. He will scry that top card. We're going to see where it's going to go. Looks like it's going to go to the bottom. Green light given. Let's play some magic, my friends. Let's take a quick look-see here at this blue-white control deck. Mm -hmm. How many copies of Teferi are in this deck? Zero? Zero. Uh, he's using the OG, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Boo. Freshly unbanned. Boo. You know, go back home. You know, we, we don't need you. That card stinks. Boo. That is incredibly <laughs> insulting. <laughs> it, you know, I don't have delicate sensibilities, but if I did, that would offend them. <laughs> a scavenging news here for Justin Miller. <laughs> Andrew Davis has a hollowed fountain. And now he has a Glacial Fortress. We go back over to Justin. He's picked up a copy of Dark Confidant. And attack for two. Going to bring Andrew Davis down to 17. Treetop Village. Scavenging is not the best form of pressure in this matchup. Uh, Tarmogoyf is pretty good, especially when backed up by a Thought Seizer and Inquisition of Kozilek. Uh, but Scavenging is, you know, there's not usually that many creatures in the graveyard. Uh, Blue Eye Control is, is good at exiling things. Um, you know, so most of the creatures that the scavenger is going to be eating are going to be things that get countered, like that scavenging news from earlier, uh, or things that get hit by a Supreme Verdict. You did see that second copy of scavenging news get hit by the first copy of Mana Lake there from Andrew Davis. Davis played a copy of Field of Ruin, and it looks like he may be passing the turn back over to Miller, and he will. Miller's third land, by the way, was a copy of Treetop Village. Yeah, it's one you don't see too much in Jun these days. Uh, it's a four of in most of the black green uh, straight thing, uh, straight versions of this deck. Um, it doesn't help fix your colors like a Raging Ravine, but it does cost you know one one or two less mana, you know, depending on which one you're you're trying to play it over. And it looks like we have a winner on the top shelf, my friends. It is going to be Daniel Barkin winning the match over Porter Darby, two games yeah. to one. So Lance is going to take care of death and taxes. And we may watch a couple more turns of this one as the beautiful island has been placed on the battlefield. I want to see the conclusion of this match. Uh, I just uh, found out Andrew Davis has four copies of Terminus in his modern deck. Really? Yeah. It seems pretty good with Jason the Mind Sculptor, not going to lie. Uh, he also has a bunch of opt. So, you know, he can cast it on his opponent's turn pretty easily if he has it on top of his deck. We're seeing a new build to blue-white control in Modern right now, folks. People oh, are just sure. trying some new things. Teferi has definitely opened up what players can do. And now we see a Gideon going to slow down. That scavenging is. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'm in love with the use of Field of Ruin on the previous turn. Uh, you saw 
uh, Justin didn't have access to black mana, leading off with uh, Raging Ravine, Forest, into Treetop Village. And the Field of Ruin Wallet prevents three damage uh, from the attack, uh, which is important, obviously, to protect your life total. Keeping your opponent off of black mana is equally as important, I would think. And Gideon sitting on four right now as we head back over to Andrew Davis. I guess Andrew feels that, you know, if he's going to be using stuff like Path to Exile, uh, keeping his opponent off black mana is, is not going to be that easy. I presume with the fact that the game is going to go long, or at least longer, that Justin will draw black mana eventually, right? Let's see what we have here. Right. Uh, looks like Scavenging is trying to eat Opt, and I believe that Andrew is going to try to Snapcaster Opt in response. It's possible he just wants to let it go, though. Oh, there's your Snapcaster Mage. And here is your Opt. Well, Scoos will also eat the leak. Oh, sure, sure. And now Dark Confidants will reveal a Liliana of the Last Hope. A very nice card in this matchup. Yeah, doesn't quite have the second black mana source to cast it, though. It would be very good right now to hit that Snapcaster Mage with a freebie, attack the Gideon for two with the, the, the Dark Confidant, since Scavenging Ooze is, of course, still locked down from the, the Gideon's plus one. Mm, Gideon looking pretty good here. Gideon, definitely a card that has helped put this blue-white control deck on the map. I know some players, of course, prefer Jeskai, but for blue-white control fans, they really do like Gideon as one condition and a way to prolong the game. You gotta be kind of a psychopath to prefer Path to Exile over Lightning Bolt as a removal spell. Giving your opponent a land is gross. <laughs> there is Dark Confidant, gonna bring Gideon down to three. Is it time? All right, worse than Teferi, here's Jace the Mind Sculptor. Going to draw three cards. Not all that impressive. Put two back. <laughs> Doesn't seem that worse than Teferi right now. <laughs> that Gideon is locking down the scavenging use, so the Dark Confidant itself won't be able to kill the Jace outright. Fetchland going to shuffle away two lands. He's already gotten like six lands or whatever in his hand. Oh, like. Jace the Mediocre Sculptor. Back over to Justin. Scavenging use is going to turn into a 3-3. Three, three. Confidant Trigger. See what Justin does reveal. It'll be a copy of Verdant Catacombs. There's a second black mana source. Yeah, it's a turn too late. If he had drawn a second black source last turn, uh, he could have uh, Liliana plus one to kill the Snapcaster Mage and then use Lightning Bolt to finish off the Gideon alongside the Dark Confidant. Now he's facing down two Planeswalkers, and he can't get either of them off the battlefield, I don't believe. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit tougher. He's got multiple copies of Liliana. Looks like also a Kitchen Finks in hand and another copy of Dark Confidant. Does Justin Miller, but no clean way, it appears, for Justin to get Jace or Gideon off the battlefield. He can just keep casting creatures, but that's just going to eventually run him into a Terminus from a Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's not ideal. Terminus is looking like it's going to hold uh, a lot of value in this particular scenario if he hits it, though, because uh, Kitchen Finks does not uh, you know, care about Supreme Verdict very much. Yeah. <laughs> Kitchen Finks, it's persist against Terminus, not so much. Here's three mana. This is going to be, it looks like Liliana the Veil, but he might go to Liliana the last hope. Just depends on which Liliana Justin wants to play right now, honestly. Got two options, both good. Yeah, I don't foresee uh, Liliana the Veil being that great here. Uh, Justin knows that Andrew has at least one land somewhere floating around in his hand probably uh, because he saw uh, multiple lands with the Inquisition of Kozilek earlier. Fulminator Mages, plural, are going to go to the graveyard. And now we'll see what Justin uh, is going to bring on back. It looks like Fulminator Mage, so that's back in the hand. And now Dark Confidant is going to... Knock Jace down to one. Justin Miller will pass the turn. Andrew Davis will sacrifice a fetch land. Saw a lot of people, once they came out with the new Planeswalker rule where you can have uh, multiple Planeswalkers with the same name, 
uh, joke that the blue eye control deck was just going to become a Gideon tribal deck. Yeah. Because it had uh, Gideon of the Trials, uh, Gideon Jura, as well as uh, uh, Zendikar one. Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Ally of Zendikar. It's time for Andrew Davis to brainstorm. He's got Chase for now two turns. I always find to be the flashpoint in modern is if you have Chase for three turns, you're probably going to win the game. It's just been hard to keep around for three turns for most players. Two cards will go back here for Andrew Davis. That is the Celestial Colony. Gideon going to slow down old scavenging news once again, it looks like. I like this attack. Oh, actually, we're going to go attacking. As long as he's attacking the Liliana. He's actually going to go at Justin. Okay. Pass the turn back. He's going to try to kill him. All right. Scavenging news is going to eat... A creature looks like as it turns into a 4-4. Reveal with confidence. That'll be a thought seize. Miller's going to fall down to 11 once again. Now he'll draw a card. It's a copy of Tarmogoyf. There's a Verdant Catacombs. That's be land number five there for Justin Miller, who's starting to have a stock hand, and he looks like he wants to start off with a thought seize. Kind of interesting scenario there if... Um if Justin wanted to, he actually had the option to move to declare attacker step. That kind of forces Andrew's hand to use the Crypto Command uh, as a tap ability. Um, and that gives Justin the option to activate Raging Ravine after the tap ability resolves, unless Andrew des decides to bounce the Raging Ravine with the secondary mode. So, you know, it gives your Crypto Command opponent the ability to potentially make a mistake. Then you get to use your Raging Ravine. Uh, uh, maybe not so much. The Field of Rune on the other side, keeping that in check. Maybe he's just given up on ever activating Raging Ravine. Yeah, I think that's much further down the road now at this point. Here's Field of Ruin, too. Take care of the old Ravine. This will allow both players to go get a land. Another island there for Andrew Davis. A beautiful one there, an unstable island. This should still be during the Declare Attacker step. He wanted to use the Field of Ruin then. Uh, that would give him uh, access to four mana after it resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still able to use Cryptic Man as a tap draw card. Protect both of his Planeswalkers. I think that may be the plan here for Andrew Davis. There is a very powerful Cryptic Command. Looks like it's going to be Bounce Liliana. Tap both creatures. Okay. Now it's going to be time to replay something here for Justin Miller. Can replay one of these Lilianas. Can play a Fulminary Mage. A couple of options. I think a Terminus here would shut the door. Doesn't have it yet, though. We did get a fresh shuffle off of the uh, Field of Ruin, but Andrew having a tough time finding that Terminus. Going to put two cards back now is Andrew. Looks like he found another fetch land there in Flooded Strand. Yep, so he can continue to put together some very nice brainstorms here via Jace the Mind Sculptor. Now that'll be a Path to Exile on Kitchen Finks. I am curious to see if Andrew's going to continue to get aggressive here with Gideon. He just answered my question. Knock you down to seven. Could even fire up a old, old colony, too. Yeah, he's not playing stuff like Lightning Bolt, though, so the odds of him being able to deal the last three damage uh, without going through combat is very small. That's what Dark Confidant's for. You your old, you your old pal. Dude. That's my boy. He's going to backfire on you. <laughs> he does that quite a bit. Yeah. Let's see what Dark Confidant's going to reveal this time. Oof. Down to five. Tarmogoyf is powerful, but not right now. Another Dark Confidant drawn. So many creatures in hand. Mm -hmm. That's what blue-white control loves. You having creatures is here as Cryptic Command again. Tap all your things. Draw a card before... I will fetch. This is going to make it so that he's going to draw something new. Yeah, he did put two lands back on top, flooding out a little bit, but the power of Jace the Mind Sculptor, making sure that he doesn't flood out too badly. And actually, Andrew says, I'm going to get a basic planes. 
Then resolve cryptic command. Tap draw. Terminus. Terminus. Well, we know he, might not, he might not even cast it if he draws off the miracle because uh, Justin still probably needs to put more creatures on the battlefield this turn. Mm -hmm. Is it five facing down? A potential Celestial Colonnade, but that can be taken care of through the Fulminator Mage. There is a Fulminator Mage. That will resolve. Is there anything else for Justin Miller to do? Tarmadork. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, there yeah. that is. There's another one. Nice. Let's uh, head on back over to, uh, to Andrew Davis now here. He's taking a look at his graveyard. Various cryptic commands and path exiles and all that jazz. Seems like a tough matchup here for Justin Miller. Once Andrew's able to get his feet set with Jason Gideon, which he's been able to do this game. Tarmogoyf checking in at 4-5. That is not a terminus. <laughs> Here, here's a brainstorm. My, that, my expert analysis, it's not a terminus. Ah, Sphinx's Revelation. Now we're talking. He doesn't really even need extra cards at this point, though. He just needs very specific things. Another Cryptic Command would be insanely good. Um, you know, Supreme Verdict also very good. That's hey, it is. He drew a miracle. He's, it is. It's a terminus. <laughs> <laughs> is gonna clear up all the knuckleheads. This will allow Gideon to keep on getting in. That rest in peace is looking pretty appealing right now too, yep. actually. The, doesn't seem to have great synergy with uh, Search for Escanta, but, you know. Well, that's true. Gideon, come on in. Of course, only tapping the one mana because he floated mana from the Celestial Colonnade as it died. Justin Miller down to one. That means that Verda Catacombs? Nope. Overgrown Tomb? You're going to be getting the battlefield tapped. Thank you much. Dark Confidant, I don't think, is what you want to play. <laughs> Here is Tarmogoyf today. We'll see what the follow-up is. It is going to be a Dark Confidant. Well, it blocks pretty well. Yeah. Chump Block City. Let's go back over to Andrew Davis. He's going to sacrifice a polluted Delta. His team got the win already. Looking for the clean sweep here before they get ready for round number 12. Always good to get a little bit of extra practice in, too, if you can. Now they're playing for our sake, too. Man, yeah, there's there a Vendillion click to end things here for the good? team of Bargain Davis and Pastor. They